Um, for everybody listening, my name is Sam Craig. I'm the VP of Product Engineering over at Ubix Security. And uh, no offense to DBAs or DBEs of the world, um, but I'm going to talk a little bit about encrypting data so even you can't get to it. Um, a little bit of the evolution of encryption and data protection in general over the past couple decades. So I don't know if anybody else lived through these days, but I certainly did. Uh, back in the day when you protected your data by putting it in a really, really, I don't know, strong place. You, uh, you'd give it to Iron Mountain, they'd put it in the truck, they'd cart it down the road and they'd lock it away under lock and key because your data wasn't encrypted and you needed to protect it. Well, that didn't work. Um, trucks crashed, trucks spilled stuff, people found data and enter the world of 2010 and we had disk encryption. Um, encrypting data at rest was the next big thing to do. And as that evolution continued, we saw lovely things like Windows BitLocker, Ubuntu had their own, um, and, and we started uh, relying on the usage of data at rest encryption through um, full disk encryption as a way to protect our data, and that seemed good enough. Except that also left us vulnerable to anybody that could get access to that device. And uh, as, as I probably still do more than I should, using passwords that are easy to remember, people sticking them on their keyboards, workplaces that um, uh, allow you to get into that device and, and therefore unlocking that data was a, a huge vulnerability and a, and a huge attack vector um, to get to that data again. So as we've, as we've progressed into the, the, the 20 teens, that really hasn't changed. Um, that, that encryption has moved more to the platform level than the device level. And um, most of the large providers of data storage continue to offer a way to do full disk encryption or their version of that. We can now do it at a database level um, with most of the, the large RDBMSs. We can do it at a data storage level with most of the cloud um, uh, storage providers. And even the file sharing uh, providers like Dropbox or Box or, or OneDrive offer encryption that it still protects the data at rest. But what that only does is protect us against that data leaving their facility. So it's not really that much better than, than the old Iron Mountain uh, you know, protection, where if somebody happens to steal your drive from AWS or steal your drive from Microsoft, sure, it's going to be protected. But that's not really a practical protection mechanism anymore. Anybody still with access to your account, your system, elevated privileges can still get to that data because it's decrypted as soon as it leaves that storage facility. So as we look to uh, why that's not good, look at OWASP. The number two uh, OWASP issue is now cryptographic failures. Further, disk encryption still doesn't get around any of the country storage specific rules and requirements that we are, we are bound by with GDPR and other regulations. Disk encryption is still discoverable. It's still breachable. It's still reportable because that data is decrypted as soon as it leaves the disk or the storage facility it's in. And encryption at rest is still just at rest. It doesn't do anything for the transit of that data between wherever it's being stored and wherever it's being used. So for all these reasons, it's just not good enough. So welcome to 2021 and soon to be 2022, where we're talking about encrypting the data itself finally, not encrypting just the storage mechanism that it's being used in or the disk it's being stored on, but encrypt the data itself. So that does something different. It allows us to protect our data, not <clears throat> just from breaches or bad actors, but also from your cloud provider, for people with elevated permissions, from bad driving like Iron Mountain, dropping my disks in the middle of the road. Uh, it, it protects us from mistakes, from accidental exposure or accidental data leakage, protects us from sysadmins, protects us from DBAs and DBEs, again, not to pick on you, uh, protects us from administrative users and really protects us from everyone. So putting that encryption level at the data protects us from any accidental or intentional usage of that outside of its intent. And it allows you to do it your way. So encrypting data from the application puts the, the encryption control outside of your storage provider, outside of your cloud provider. It allows you to store just the ciphertext and not your plain text. It allows you to maintain some queryability if you want at your data level. And probably most importantly, it frees you from any vendor or cloud specific dependencies that we all end up with when we use 
storage level encryption, whether that be dependent on AWS to provide the storage encryption because we're using S3 or dependent on Oracle because we've chosen that as our RDBMS and now have embedded encryption in our database uh, and, and can't readily move that. A little bit of info about me, uh, and I'll, I'll bring this up back at the end. And then just a quick walkthrough of how does Ubix solve this problem for us? So obviously I'm talking about the problem of encryption as a whole. Um, the, the solution to that at an app level is depicted by allowing data to flow through a, uh, an encryption process that sits client side. It's really elevating encryption to your application and allowing you to do that in a way that doesn't change your, your data structure, doesn't mess with your existing databases, and allows you to store that ciphertext in the place you would normally have stored your plain text, but in an encrypted way, so that as it comes back to your application, uh, it, it gets decrypted at an app level, client side preferably, and protects that data in the entire life cycle of it transiting the network, transiting its storage, uh, and, uh, and allows you to fully control that encryption process. I'm gonna pause there and go back to this slide for a second um, and, and see if there's any questions. Okay. Um, hey Sam, at this point, not yet. And I have okay. an issue with my camera that I'm trying to fix. So please continue. Okay, cool. So um, what I'm gonna do is talk through this in a little bit more detail. And so um, the, the breakage point for data encryption at rest typically revolves around the, the, the notion that at disk um, protects your, your data only to the extent that nobody else can access it. So if I go back to um, the, the typical DBA example, when you're a, uh, an administrator of any kind, whether that be a database admin or a sysadmin or somebody else that has elevated privileges to any storage container, your ability to access the data works hand in hand with the encryption mechanism that that storage provides, which means that if you can get in, you can decrypt the data. What we're suggesting is that application encryption should break that model. Application level data encryption should ensure that the retrieval of that data, the storage of that data is done in a way that the data itself at rest is not viewable in any kind of plain text to those that have access to it, even elevated privileges. And so what we we're talking about is changing the actual data stored in your database. If you store social security number, store that as ciphertext. And if you have someone that has database access, either intentionally or otherwise, the retrieval of that no longer exposes your social security numbers and no longer exposes your PII, your PHI, whatever it is that you're protecting. And that data is transited only in ciphertext, only in an encrypted mechanism until it gets back to the database, uh, to the application, where it can finally be decrypted to its normal format only for display or usage by that privileged user that is authorized through your app. The same, uh, the same concept works for data in a database. It works for files in Dropbox. It works for really any data at rest anywhere. Um, it's transparent to your data storage layer because effectively what we're doing is is leaving the data storage to do its job transparently. And that job is just to, to give and receive. Um, it can still encrypt that data, it's just encrypting ciphertext instead. But the important point is that if anyone uh, gets access to the data from, uh, from that storage layer, whether it be a, a relational database or from a, uh, a file store, that ultimately all they're getting is encrypted data. Um, what that protects against is a number of things that growing regulations and requirements are, are not able to, uh, to be solved for through normal disk level encryption. The, the two I'll call out again are the, uh, the country specific storage requirements are very, um, it, are, are, are kind of a growing regulation within GDPR that does not allow for uh, disk level encryption to, to protect against that because it obviously becomes clear text as soon as you retrieve it. The other are reporting and, and breach event reporting that is required when that data is retrieved from 
a, 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 a mechanism that decrypts the data on exit. If that data that's, that's breached or lost is encrypted, the reporting requirements for it are, are, are rather avoided, but much, much less. Um, and so ultimately that solution of only storing ciphertext and protecting not just against bad actors or data leakage, but protecting against our own mistakes, our own uh, elevated users, our own DBAs, DBEs, sysadmins, those that have access to the data by nature of their job, um, that protects us a, a even further and kind of closes that gap between the, the disk level encryption that we've dealt with for, for the last uh, 20 years, um, or, at, or at least drive level and then disk level encryption, and brings it kind of the last mile all the way up to the application layer so that your data is, is not accessible in clear text outside of just the, the display of that from application to user and allows us finer grain authorization control at that level um, through the application itself. I'm, I'm out of slides and out of, uh, and, and out of content. I, I'm sure I can keep going for a while. I know I've got a couple minutes left, um, but we'll, we'll pause here again and, and, uh, and, and see if there's anything anybody uh, would like me to talk about for the last few minutes. Um, Thank you so far, uh, Sam, for this for this great presentation. And uh, the need of encryption is obvious. Uh, can you tell us something like from a application perspective? We know that you shouldn't be writing your own. Uh, you, you shouldn't be writing your own uh, uh, encryption uh, as a developer. But do sure. you have any, any good leads on encryption libraries? For sure. Um, I, I think there was actually a presentation last night about how, how hard encryption is and and don't do it ourselves because we will mess it up. Um, so as, as an offering, Ubic offers encryption libraries. Well, I'll say we offer application libraries and in a host of other languages that it, it demystifies the usage of encryption for your application. Um, there's, there's plenty of other options as well, but our client side library effectively turns that entire encryption process into a, uh, a method call that makes encryption and decryption kind of super simple. Um, we offer that across most common application programming languages uh, and, and kind of take care of that for you. Keeps it client side, uh, but that's part of the library that we offer that also manages uh, the integration to our cloud platform. All right, thank you. I've got a question in from Christian who has been with us since Basically, the APJ version of the of this already. <laughs> All right, um, probably has had more coffee than me. Uh, well, I, I applaud for him. I mean, uh, this is great. Um, how works searching on the uh, uh, crypto data on uh, database? That's a great question. Um, so there are two approaches to searching encrypted data. Uh, the first is by using a deterministic encryption method mechanism if you want to. Deterministic encryption, meaning that the same piece of data encrypted multiple times will work the same. This is actually a similar approach that if you've read any of Mongo's security white papers they, they use, they're, they're uh, pretty well respected. But what that means is that if you use our deterministic encrypted approach, if you encrypt, let's say, a social security number, and you encrypt that 10 different times, you'll get the same result. And so you can search for that in the database by way of uh, searching for that specific ciphertext, which gives you your results. That's approach one. It's a little bit uh, mechanical, but it's functional. Uh, the second is that through the use of database libraries, you can uh, effectively invoke our encryption decryption uh, mechanism at a query level, which means that you can use a function call that decrypts data effectively record by record as part of your database query. You pay a performance hit for that because it actually has to look at a record set to do the decryption to do your matching, but that allows you effectively full query ability by doing the decryption on the fly through use of what we'll call kind of a database library as you're doing your query. Um, and then the third approach is that we can offer a partially encrypted um, piece of content through the use of a, a format preserving encryption mechanism. So what that means is that if you're, again, encrypting a social security number, it's got you know three numbers, a dash, four numbers, a dash, and two. Um, when we encrypt that, 
we can leave that in its exact same format, but say leave the last several digits um, in plain text. So you're really only encrypting the first six or the first whatever you want so that you're leaving partial uh, in clear text and you're only using cipher text for the rest. And that gives you query ability of maybe the piece that was important or the identifying piece that is important to you. So there's a couple different ways to do it depending on the use case and, uh, and kind of the type of querying that you want to do. I, uh, I think that will answer Christian's uh, uh, question. There Perfect. was another question and I honestly am not sure uh, it relates to something like, does this mean the master keys are in RAM at all the clients to decrypt the data? And I am- That's a great question. Here. Yep. So in our model, the master key never actually transits outside of the HSM. Um, our uh, solution uses the master key as a one-time event. It kind of vaults its way into, the, into its uh -huh. HSM. And then that master key is only used to issue data level keys that are used for the encryption decryption process. So there is a data key that is used and the rotation of that can, I, can kind of varies in frequency based on the type of encryption, uh, but can be as frequent as every encryption event. That is what is stored in memory at the application layer to do the encryption. But the master key uh, never transits outside of the HSM. It is it's kind of viewed as that, that thing that needs to be protected at all costs. All right. Thank you so much, Sam. Uh, I think uh, this answers uh, the questions right away. Um, I want to thank you for your excellent presentation and, and, and the insights that you gave us. And I hope you, uh, you enjoy the rest of the talk. <laughs> thank you so much for having me. It's been a pleasure and I uh, look forward to talking more soon. Absolutely. Take care. Bye-bye.